What's up everybody? Today I want to give you a behind the scenes look at a music video I recently shot for the Piano Guys. Now one of the questions I get asked most often is how do I land paying jobs? And there are many ways to go about it, but I found that most of the jobs I get come from people seeing my work either on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, so it's all about sharing my work on social media. And I've been posting work publicly for about five years now, and over that time, my name and my work has been seen by millions of people. So when Paul, who's the videographer for the Piano Guys, hurt his back and needed somebody to sub in for him on his next shoot, he was familiar with my name and my work and chose me to shoot their upcoming music video. But when the Piano Guys approached me about this video, they said they wanted to replicate a scene from the recently released film La La Land. So my first step was to find a location that looked similar to the scene in La La Land. And because I was busy on other projects, once again I hired my buddy Lance to come do some location scouting for me on this shoot as well. So he found several restaurants that could work, and we narrowed it down to the one that fit the feel of the film the best, and we booked it. Now, the first problem we were encountering was the fact that the scene in La La Land took place at night, and we were going to be shooting during the day since that was the only time that we could rent out the location. So we have all the windows completely blacked out, gaff tape shutting off all the little creases so that we make sure that no light is leaking in and that way we're able to replicate the night scene. Our next challenge was trying to replicate the lighting change that happens in the scene in La La Land as all the practical lights are slowly dimmed and replaced by a spotlight above the pianist. So we rounded up some cheap $5 lamps at Ikea along with some remote control dimmable LED bulbs so we could slowly dim all the practical table lamps at the same time while also turning on the spotlight. So we'll have two people at each table and I'll say something like three, two, one, dim, and everyone's just gonna dim down. Three, two, one, dim. Switch. Our two most important tables were late on the switch. That was good, that looked pretty good. Three, two, one, dim. Switch. Once on set, we realized though that the spotlight didn't have a remote to control the dimmability. So as a solution, we taped a piece of string to the dimmable knob on the light so that the gaffer could dim the light from a distance by simply pulling on the string. Also, because the ceilings were lower than expected, we couldn't get the spotlight high enough to replicate the same lighting as the La La Land scene. So we put the light slightly behind the pianist, giving the scene a slightly different but similar feel to the movie. And to help us achieve the cool spotlight effect, we brought in a hazer to fill the room with a nice soft haze. Now because the only lights in the scene were the table lamps, we had no light directly on our pianist. So we used our Westcott flex kit and taped one of the flex pads to the ceiling with a small sheet of diffusion to key light our subject. The last thing that was needed to make this scene complete was about 20 extras to fill all the tables. So I did a post on Facebook and Instagram and rounded up a group of extras and told them to wear dark colored suits and dresses. Now one of the questions I get asked is how do I script and storyboard these kinds of videos? On this shoot it was actually fairly simple because we were just trying to replicate the same scene from La La Land so the storyboarding was already there. But the song used in the La La Land scene is only two minutes long and the song we were using for the piano guys was five minutes long. So I had to plan to fill out the rest of those three minutes with other shots. With most music videos, I try to get as much coverage as I can and then piece it together in the editing room. Typically my plan is to make sure I do full takes of the whole song at different focal lengths. I'll do wide shots of the whole scene, then I'll do various kinds of tight shots, one of just the piano's face, and then a couple different tight shots of the hands. And then after I cover all the tight angles, I follow up with some medium shots of the hands and face as well. And some cutaways in case I need to cover up any of the camera or piano mistakes. How'd you feel on that, John? Good. Missed two notes, but I don't think anyone missed. Cool. Give me a nice big laugh. Smiley conversation, nice. Now the La La Land scene is made up of only two one takes. So this made it a bit challenging for me as a cameraman to have to nail the camera movements for a full 60 second take and for the pianist to nail a perfect piano performance for a full 60 second take. So most of our four hours of shooting was spent trying to make sure we nailed all of the one takes. <laughs> Okay, good, cut. Oh, I'm so glad I played that good. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. 
Is that a good take? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I liked good. it. Yeah. It's so great, so great. And then I spent about an hour at the very end grabbing all the other angles that we could use to cut in if any of the other one takes didn't work. Now as far as camera equipment used on this shoe, I shot everything on the 1DX Mark II with the 18-35 1.8 Sigma Art and the 50mm Sigma Art. I was actually originally planning on shooting this whole thing on my Red Weapon, but I needed to be able to have continuous focus, and I actually rented out a follow focus system the night before, but it wasn't working properly, so I had to bag it and use my 1DX Mark II, which has awesome in-camera autofocusing, which allows me to move closer and farther away from my subject while keeping them in focus the whole time. The focus setting I use most of the time on the 1DX is called Flexi Zone, which allows me to select a part of my frame that I want to focus, and whatever is in the center of that box will stay in focus. As far as camera settings go, we shot this whole video at a 1.8 aperture, 1 50th of a shutter speed, ISO at 400, which is native for the 1DX, and 24 frames per second. One question I get asked about shooting music videos is how do I make sure the pianist is synced to the music track the whole time? And for this shoot, I use what's called a UE Boom speaker, which connects through Bluetooth to my phone, and I had Sarah, who was one of the extras, pushing play on my phone to start the music track each take. And then I put the speaker inside the piano as close to the pianist's ear as I could without being in the shot so that he could hear the recorded track over the sound of his own piano playing. And I just matched up the audio in post using plural. Now, a quick tip about editing music videos, try to avoid jump cuts. A jump cut, for example, is when you have a medium shot of a hands playing on the piano, and then you cut to a similar shot of a very similar angle of the same thing but the hands playing the piano. Instead, I would choose maybe a close-up of the face or a wide shot of the whole scene or a cutaway of some other action. Another editing tip is to always try and cut on the action or hard counts of the music. Take for example this sequence. Every time his left hand comes in slamming those low keys right next to the camera, I use his action and movement to create a cut to the next clip. Always be looking for motion, action, and music changes to help your viewer feel the flow of the music better. Now as far as directing goes, most musicians know how they want to look on camera, but every once in a while I'll coach them through facial expressions and head movements and so on. I always try and encourage the artist to put as much passion into their performance as possible so the audience can really feel the music through their body language. This can be difficult sometimes to keep the energy high when you're shooting take after take, so it's important to remind them to stay energetic and to be energetic yourself so that they can feed off of your energy. Oh, nailed it! Great. Wow! Thank you. Good performance, everyone. Yes. Another tip to creating energy is through camera movements. So for this shoot, I used my Glidecam HD 4000 and made sure that I was moving the whole time to create more energy through the movements of my camera. Now this music was different than most music videos I've shot because we were replicating a Hollywood scene, but with most music videos I shoot, I like to find beautiful landscapes and shoot performance music videos. And I'll usually try and cram all the shooting into a two to three hour window during golden hour, when the light is the most flattering. And to see more of these music video virtual job shadows, you can check them out at fulltimefilmmaker.com where I teach people not only how to shoot cinematic video, but also how to land paying clients and sponsorships. And speaking of sponsorships, big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. They are an all-in-one website designing platform whom I have personally used, love, and can highly recommend to all, especially those of you who don't have any website building knowledge like myself. They have tons of professional looking templates helping you build a beautiful site for your business in no time. And you can actually start a free trial today at squarespace.com. And if you end up liking it, be sure to enter offer code PARKER to get 10% off your first purchase. But well, that's it, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe for more free content. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.